it's Christine. Today I have something new, I'm excited. So I was invited by Miss Kimberly over at I'd Rather Be Scrapbooking. So she has a YouTube channel, so check her out. I'll put a link down below because she invited me to join her hop. It's a themed page kit challenge. And basically um, she sent me a theme and it's relationships. And I took the assignment as I need to build my own page kit. Now, I actually technically have a couple of collections over there, like already made collections that might have worked. But like I said, I kind of took the assignment as build your own page kit based off of the relationship theme. Now, she said uh, basically this was a very wide ranging theme. It could be any relationship. It could be with you know, uh, you know, whomever. Um, it could be with a thing. It could be with a pet. It could be a person, whatever. Um, I took it. Well, so here's what I did. I kind of went over my stash because I thought, okay, this is a good stash bushing opportunity. And I went looking and I had this really beautiful Prima Marketing collection called, it says Hello Pink Autumn. Yeah, that looks like the collection name. And I only had a couple little pieces left. Like I, I've already got into this thing and I only had a few little pieces left and it's just really beautiful. Um, so I wanted to get into this. So I picked out, uh, well, I picked it out. I've got, this is what I have left, is this is my 12 by 12. And then this here is, I'm gonna use this as cut aparts because I think these are really beautiful. It's kind of meant for cut aparts. Um, it's foiled as well with like a rose gold, which is lovely. And then uh, there's this uh, other little sheet, as you can see, I've cut into it. And then I have this little sheet, which I cut into, and this sheet. You can see like the, I guess the A side is the foiled side. And then your B side is a little less foil. Now, I decided also to go ahead and get into the stash over here, and I pulled out some cardstocky stuff here. Um, if I have to rank these, I don't really know if I'll use this one. I, I definitely pulled out this pink solid cardstock. I do not know what it is. It feels it's textured, probably basil, but I can't swear on it. And then I pulled out a purple because I found I thought it kind of went with this stuff. And then I've got this, um, the challenge with this one is I think the purples are fine, but it's not, this is a white base and this is more creamy. But then this is too, it's kind of creamy. So I'm gonna have to see. But these are the three pieces of cardstock I pulled out to go with this set of papers. Um, oh, and then I also had this big thing here, fall hugs. I have not yet picked a sketch or anything, by the way. Um, I will show you my picture. It's a horizontal four by six. There's a Christmas tree in it, but it was actually at Thanksgiving. Um, this is, this is my daddy. Um, if you've watched any of my videos, I've mentioned a couple times he's in the hospital. He's still in the hospital. He's been there, um, well, since January 2nd. So I guess he's, he's in the, he's in there for a little while. That's my sister, my stepsister, Denea, my bonus mom, my sister, myself, and my daughter, and my husband. So we were at Thanksgiving, even though the tree's in there. Honestly, the person taking the picture is my sister-in-law and so she's not shown unfortunately I wish she were in there but this is my family so I'm thinking in my head the relationships is you know family stuff then I pulled out um and I do not have a plan yet so we'll see what happens but I did have this little rose gold um set of thickers here um I'm thinking what I'm going to do is use the enjoy today but I don't know if I'll be able to use any of that, not the ice cream, but there's a flower. We'll see. Maybe a home. I'll have to see because there's navy in there and that's not in here. So don't know that I'll use anything else other than this little title, but I did like that. And then I also had these, um, <laughs> darn it. I want to say this is, I know it's on here. Oh yeah. Heidi Swap. And the, these little phrases are kind of in the same purpley family. So I'll have to look through that and see if I can use some of those. And then I pulled these out. These actually came from a hip kit not too long ago. I forget which month. I could probably look it up if you need to know. Um, but I thought it kind of had like, it's wood obviously, but there's a little bit of grayish in here. I don't know. Thinking maybe those will go. And then I pulled out a random bunch of little things in kind of the color family. You know, there's some pinks and there's some purples and stuff like that. And then I had all these little vellum pieces I've cut with dyes. I had a little envelope where I made these, like pre-made them. And so I thought, you know, maybe I could use these some kind of way. I do have all these little vellum hearts I pre-cut. I'm thinking in my head I want to use those, generally speaking. But anyway, I've got all these little hearts here. So 
Again, I don't have a plan yet. Um, I'll stop the camera. I'm gonna figure out my plan and then I'll come back and kind of share the plan and then I'll speed everything up while I'm doing the layout. All right, give me just a second. Okay, I think I got a plan. So let me show you. So I found this little sketch here on Pinterest. It's by Little Yellow Bicycle. Well, it was on their blog, it looks like. Um, no idea how old this is. I wish sometimes they'd put dates or whatever, but anyways. The idea here is I've got this horizontal photo. There's a circular element, and I'll show you just a second. And then there's some, it looks like there's a big uh, background and maybe an inner piece and then a stripe. Okay, you can see that. Anyways, what I'm thinking here is, although the background on that one was light, I think I'm gonna use my dark, my dark pot pumpkin paper. Cause I just, I've said this before. It's just hard to cut the pretties. It's just so hard to cut the pretties. So I'm gonna mount this on that. And then I think when I'm gonna, oh, I've done trim some stuff, I'll show you in a second. I think I might use this. I said I wasn't even sure if I was gonna use it, but I think I will. I'm gonna use it down here as that stripe across the bottom. And I'll need to mount my photos and all that. So for the circular element that was in the upper right-hand corner, they, I just fuss, fussy cut this wreath out of the one sheet I had. And I'm gonna mount my picture. I'm gonna have to do something though, because this is very dark and there's a lot of stuff going on. I'm not certain yet. I, need, I may need to, I'll have to mount this on some lighter papers or something. I gotta do something to kind of make that pop. So, gonna take some thinking. Gonna take some thinking. But that's what I'm gonna start with. So let me put you guys on fast forward. If I get too bogged down, I'll probably stop the camera and then restart when I get some traction again. But I, I'm thinking, okay, I'm gonna start with these papers and then we'll see what happens, all right? All right, everybody, let's get started. So the first thing I'm gonna do, and I'll end up cutting some of this out just so y'all don't have to watch me paste down some of the stuff here. But first thing I'm gonna do is um, gut my little piece of pink cardstock here. It's the textured one. I think I told y'all it's basil. I mean, again, I can't swear on it. It just has like a nice little, it's not textured with the hash kind or what do you wanna call that? The baskety weavy kind. It's more like a bumpy texture. Um, it's really pretty, I like it. And then I need to, of course, trim down my uh, little dark pumpkin paper here. Y'all, this collection, oh, it was just so beautiful. Um, I think I may have shared some on my Instagram a while back when I used it the first time, but there, it's just beautiful. It's got that rose gold foiling in with those pumpkins. It's a really unique color combination for autumn. I just thought it was just beautiful. So I really didn't want to cut this dark piece of paper. And so I was kind of proud of myself for figuring out to use, um, you know, in the sketch, it looked like a light piece with a dark stripe at the bottom. And I go, okay, I'm just gonna reverse that. Um, truthfully, I probably could have, you know, maybe in a different time, or if I was trying to keep, I was trying to keep using this collection, I would have trimmed off that bottom piece there that I just covered with that um, little, I don't know what kind of pattern that is. Is that like a polka dotted kind of deal? Anyway, what I covered with that, I probably would have normally, if I was trying to make this collection, like stretch it, I would have trimmed that off, but this is the last little bit and I didn't want to be silly about it. So um, I, I trimmed off that for the stripe. Now what I'm doing is I'm matting the photograph. And the reason you saw me kind of flip the paper there, that it's it's got this lilac with a little bit of like shading um, on the edges. And I wanted that little bit darker shading on that lilac up there to be behind the photograph. So I'm off camera, sorry about that, but I'm just matting. I'm just trimming the cardstock to match the photo. And then I do go ahead and use this piece as the next layer. Technically, it's I'm turning it to its side, um, but I'm not. You're not really gonna be able to see the pattern too much. So it's more about the colors, I guess, in a sense, and a little bit of the foiling. I did want some of that foiling to show. Now I'm gonna actually end up putting foam between the photo and its first mat, and then that mat. Um, but I'm gonna mat this a third time too, so you'll see that in just a moment um, with that pink bumpy cardstock and. That kind of helps, again, I don't necessarily want to see the pattern per se because it's not oriented the right way, but I do like the pattern. So by mounting the photograph on in its first layer on foam, I create this kind of cool layer. Like you can, it lifts it enough to see some of the pattern and it gives a little shadow and stuff. I hope you see that in the close-ups maybe better, but you'll see me do that in a moment. Um. I was kind of sad, I, you know, I had fussy cut that wreath there with that fall hugs, and I was a little sad to cover up fall hugs because, of course, we are, you know, kind of hugging in the picture a little bit, and 
in its fall, but the the obviously the sketch didn't show that, and I really couldn't figure out a good way to show that. Um, you know, it it just it just felt better to to cover the fall hugs and and I I have a different title which I think I showed you guys, but it's like enjoy today. I'm hoping this is still aligned with the whole relationship theme. In my mind, it is. So maybe that <laughs> maybe that's really all that matters is if you're in your own mind, it is. Okay, so I'm just kind of showing you there. I mentioned earlier I'm going to have to figure out something to do behind that wreath. I don't actually do a lot. I thought about doing mixed media, like a white or something, but I really, the paper was just so pretty, and I didn't really want to cover up that foiling that's in there. You can kind of see the foiling just a little bit. Um, it's a broken, like, it's not exactly a hexagon. There's, like, diamonds. You can kind of see it in this this shot here. It's, it's foiled, and it's kind of this broken pattern, but it's so pretty. Um, and I didn't want to cover that up, so I decided against it. I ended up just putting at the very, very end, and I don't even think I film it, to be honest. I put a little bit of foam tape up underneath those leaves just to lift it up. I do not know what I'm doing right now, <laughs> if I'm honest. I thought I cut out any kind of dead spaces. There is no telling where I've run off to. Oh, I kind of do, actually. That's a lie. I thought about using washi tape to uh, go around the outside, and I thought I had a rose gold in my Simply Gilded stuff. And I do not. I don't know where. I mean, some of the foiling on some of the tapes do have rose gold foiling, but it, it. I really wanted something that was more of a solid rose gold, and I guess I didn't have any, so I gave up on that. I end up actually inking. What I'm doing right now is I'm creating those tickets that go up underneath the picture, and the way I don't have a ticket die. I kind of wish I did, or a ticket punch even. So what I do is I'll cut my shape into a little rectangle, and then I use my round uh, or the circle punch there, that tiny little one. I think it's a half inch circle punch, uh, probably from Stampin' Up. Um, and then what you do, what you do is there's in the, in the circle punch, I guess because the way it cuts a circle, you can see there's a little cross or like a little, I guess it's a cross, um, but it's, it's a square cross. So inside the, if you flip it over, you can look inside the punch, you can see the little cross. Well, what I do is I take the corner of the paper and I line up the corner into the corner of those, that circle cross. Um, if you flip one over and you look, you kind of see what I'm talking about. But I put that corner in there, and then I'll punch it, and it just creates a little, you know, half moon or a little circle out of the corner there. See how I'm doing that? See how that corner goes to the middle? And that creates you a little ticket. Now, you're limited, obviously, on, you know, I have that real big one there, and I can't make a, I shouldn't say I can. I probably have a bigger hole punch. I just didn't go get it. Um, but it, it, the size of your circle is how big you can make your ticket corners there. So I got my ticket pieces done. I was looking at those cut aparts, and as I mentioned in the beginning, I thought, okay, I'll cut one of these cut aparts out. I don't end up doing that. I started looking at it, and none of them really, they're beautiful, but I, I, I kind of was looking at some of the pumpkins thinking maybe I could use those, but I ended up cutting into all the cut apart pieces in, the, in a way I didn't really want to. So I put it aside, and I've decided to ink the edges of my papers here. And again, I'm not going to make you sit and watch all this, but I'll, I ink the edges of my photo mats. I come in, I ink the edge of this stuff, and now I've done, and I've inked all the edges of all my little papers. Now, there's one other thing I want to mention. So, y'all see all them little vellum pieces up there? I think in a minute, even, I go looking, and there's that little posted stamp. Well, if you go back and look at the video at around 3.30, 3 minutes, 30 seconds, you'll see there's three little postage stamps. And I was going to use them in a little bit when I start putting the vellum down, and I couldn't find the other two. I don't know where they went. You know, this is while I'm actually scrapbooking. And, in fact, I didn't know where they went, even as of about 10 minutes ago before I started this voiceover, and then I started watching my video just to check the sound, and I realized I slid them up underneath that laptop. <laughs> I haven't gone and checked, but I'll bet y'all a million, do million dollars if I walk in that craft room and look underneath that laptop, them stinking little postage stamp pieces are up underneath there. So, oh well, it's all good. I didn't end up needing them really. I mean, I probably could have found a home for them, but it's okay. So what I've done is um, the sketch had those three tickets. They go up underneath the photograph and then that big like darker purple, I've made it purple ticket looking thing, um, goes to the side there. Now I'm not doing this exactly the way the sketch is, but it's close enough. Um, then I've got this kind of random piece of ephemera. I believe that came out of a, I don't really know. I want to say hip kit, could have been pink fresh, something like that. Anyway, I've got that. I'm going to put that there. Now I do end up having to like I call it double foaming it, okay? Because the depth of the picture with the foam and the four mats, it's a little bit thick. So, <clears throat> excuse me, we're going to take foam and I'm gonna have to basically cut two, two layers of it. Um, 
here's where I'm just kind of figuring, okay, how am I going to do this? Again, this is my very scientific way of cutting my foam to fit. <laughs> so, I feel like sometimes when I'm working on my table here, like, I give my, I have a good size table, and yet I always end up squeezing myself into just this tiny little workspace. I guess the lap, I really wish I could find a different way to set my laptop because it's kind of on the corner, but I also have my little selfie printer over there to the left, and so I don't have much room, and I end up really cutting off my workspace up there, and then on that right-hand side, of course, my paper trimmer always goes there, so my, I just feel like my laptop needs a new home, but I have a window that's straight in front of me, so I can't really mount, you know, any kind of shelf or anything like that, so I don't know. I'm going to have to maybe get creative. We'll have to see. All right, so I've double foamed or double foamed layer my photograph or my ticket piece there and now I'm going to go ahead and set down my my uh my little concoction there all my goodies and then I'm just using my straight ruler to make sure it's on straight which it was so good job Christine good job okay so here's where I go and I'm going to pull my title off now I'm going to cut away in just a second what I want to tell you though is the best so the ones with the foiling on top you will almost certainly bend that foiling unless you peel it from the back. Um, in other words, you, you pull the backing from the letters. Now, the challenge I ran into, and the reason I kind of cut this out, is this is an older set, and so the adhesive was sticking on there kind of funny, and I had to fight that thing just a little bit. I still actually ended up tearing one of them because I'm yanking on it. Well, and I was a little too rough. It's okay. But my, my tip of the day is to basically pull your backing from your letters so you don't bend your foil. If you've ever pulled your letter from your backing, you've most likely bent that foil, and it's a little bit sad and kind of hurts my feelings when I do it. But Okay, now I'm going over to my little random pieces of ephemera here, and I pulled out that little, it looks like a postage, it, like a U.S. piece of mail, but it's got flowers on it that kind of match. So set that down, and now I'm looking at these Heidi swap phrases. At first, I don't see one. I kind of set it aside. I, I figure there will be one, but... Again, it's kind of weird how your eye, if you look at a big sticker sheet or something like that, certain things will catch your eye and you have to go back and look again and you'll see something else that you didn't see the first time. So I set that down for just a minute and I'm looking at these little diamonds. Um, this really wasn't on the sketch. I mean, it did have like a little embellishment over there on the right and then there's some stuff up in the left and all that, but I thought these little wood um, diamonds looked pretty. Now I do struggle, I shouldn't say struggle. I do kind of vacillate on a couple of the colors because I go, okay, this color might look good or that color, but like the on the dark paper, I got to be careful because I want it to show, so it can't be too dark. Um, and I and I end up with some good a good combination, I think. So I got one on the right hand side, and I'm picking out this little solid diamond right there. And it's a you know it's a little bit orangey color, but it goes with the with the pumpkin stuff, so it's okay. And I put that one down. I don't think I stick with that color because I think it's a little too dark. I find a couple that are a little bit lighter. Yeah. Um, now, on the sketch, that was actually little circles up there, so I ended up making this this work. That's a little too dark. I ended up switching it back out, and I find another one that's, yeah, there we go. It's a little lighter, and it's kind of tying into that foiling of those diamonds. Um, I'm looking for my perfect placement. I was trying to decide, do I want those sides to kind of line up or how I want that to go? I'll end up finding another little sticker to put up there. That one right there, he goes up there on that top, top cluster, too. I thought about right there. Because, again, there was, in the sketch, there was, like, a little embellishment. Um, it actually was over the picture, but I don't do that. I don't believe. I'm pretty sure I don't. I'm not looking at the layout right now. Um, so, I end up actually putting him. I set it down for now, but I do end up putting that upper left, upper uh, cluster there. This is where I find my, um, my phrase that I decide I liked. Uh, I have to move it, though, because I was like, oh, you put, I put it down a little bit too low, and I want to pull it up. And I really like that. I thought about bringing some of the other ones in just because of the color, but I decided, no, I want this to kind of stand out. Um, I think it says something like Forever Grateful or something. Sorry, it's got a little shadow over the top, and I don't remember, and I'm not looking at it, but I know it's something about grateful. And then I'm pulling off a couple of these other little pieces. I think I find uh, a purple circle, and, of course, here I am. I've got to glue stuff down because, you know, if, if I don't, I'll forget where I want it, and <laughs> it'll fall off my layout. Here I go back to this little, it's a puffy sticker. I do not know what collection that came from. It, it, I have another couple of them with other little phrases on it. Could not tell you. But I'm going to put a little puffy uh, or a little foam tape behind it in a minute. But for the moment, I'm just looking for home. For some of these little um, extras, I was actually really proud about how I managed to make all these colors work. Okay, so here's where I'm going to this vellum. And I find this little vellum 
I feel like I have to have a ticket die now that I'm saying that because I've got this one. Where did I get that darn thing? I gotta think about that because I have this one. Maybe I do have a ticket die. <laughs> oh my gosh, y'all. You ever have so much stuff you forgot you got it? And then I said, okay, I'm gonna get these hearts. I do like these little hearts. I like the little different shapes. Um, I believe that's from a punch, actually. I just, I don't remember having a ticket punch, but maybe, see, here's where I'm looking for those postage stamps and I can't find them to save my life. I don't know where they are. See, I'm picking things up and I'm like, where'd it go? <laughs> I never do find them when I'm doing the layout. So I finally just go, well, okay, you're not supposed to have it. Um, that's where I was trying to decide how deep the, the foam needs to be. And I, I realized my fun foam was a little too thick, but these little foam uh, strips are just the right height. So that's what I'm going to use. And I like that going there. Now the vellum hearts are a little bit tricky because as you know with vellum, you can see glue through them. So what I end up doing, it was kind of interesting. If I put them on, well, I guess it's pretty normal. If you put your vellum with your little glue dot on a pattern, you really can see, I, that's where I'm like, where is that darn postage stamps? I don't know where they went. Here's where I'm kind of picking out the different shapes. I have three different shapes of these hearts, three different shapes and sizes, and I want them to kind of be varied. And so I'm just organizing them. I thought, oh, maybe there, no, no, I don't like that there. I think I put it right there, yeah. And it's just creating a little cluster up there. And then we'll find the spot for these other hearts. Not, I don't use all the hearts, I only use a couple more. Um, and again, I'm gonna come in here with some glue dots in a minute. But I have to, I started to try to put one like on top of a solid color and you could very easily see the dot, uh, the glue dot, and I didn't want that. So I ended up having to arrange them just a little bit where they go on top of a pattern that just, it kind of camouflages the glue dot just a little bit. Yeah, here's where I've got those glue dots. I just got those in the other day. I had run out completely. Well, I shouldn't say completely. I probably had just a little bit, but not much of glue dots. I, I think I made a comment in another video. I was running really low on adhesive. I had had so much adhesive for so long that I really wasn't buying any. And the last several months for me, I've just been, well, actually what started it was the 30 days of uh, sketches back in September. I started doing, I did one every day and I really just got back in the habit of scrapbooking and it just, the more I scrapbook, the faster I get. And so I was running through that adhesive and I looked in my drawer and I went, oh my gosh, I have no glue dots left or I just had like part of a roll and really no uh, no real tape runners. So I had to order some of those. I still need to order me some more for my ATG gun. I only ordered two little rolls and I really need more because I'm gonna go through those. So I'll be shopping. I have a little cart started. I've got some papers I'm excited to get. I haven't ordered them yet. I need to push the button on it, but not quite yet. I still try to be smart about my stash. See, I'm picking that dead gum postage stamp up again, but I don't use it because I've only got one and I just felt like, nah, I'm not gonna. I do think I bring in, uh, I don't use that. I don't think I use that actually. I thought about it and I, I changed my mind. I really kind of look at it and I, I, I don't think I do much more if I'm honest because I'm like, I kind of like this. It's pretty and I just, I thought about splatters and I thought about a few little things and I thought, no, I really kind of like you just the way you are. I'm gonna stop here, stop while you're ahead, right? So I'm gonna slow it down so I can show you the uh, the close-ups here. I've cleaned up my mess a little bit just because I think it's distracting and I've slowed that down. Thank you guys so much. Please make sure to check out Kimberly over at um, I'd Rather Be Scrapbooking. And thank you, Kimberly, if you've watched this. I'm hoping you do. Thank you so much for inviting me. It's just a, it's been fun. And talk soon. Have a good day. Bye.